make a part of a legendary uh, show and a legendary special. And even with your appearance, as, 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 as short as it is, you make such an impact. Uh, still, all these years later, watching the clip, tell me how you got involved in, in the special. How did you get your part? Well, I had an agent. I thought he was like 100 years old, but he wasn't. <laughs> he was sweetheart. He, he was an old a gentleman from New York, uh, a Jewish man, and uh, he would not explain to me what what the um, uh, auditions were. They, he would just go get the job. Oh, who, what, why? <laughs> Never mind, just go get the job. Okay, so I, I would, and um, uh, just take your costume, take your music, and you're gonna audition. So I did, that's how I was able to get the role. But before that, I've done other yeah. shows, a lot of other, McHale's Navy, and I mean, I saw Man From Uncle, you know? So I did a lot of shows, not always belly dancing. <laughs> but I loved belly dancing, I really did. I think it's such a great art and it's good for you. It's, it's good for your emotionally and physically. It's a great exercise, you know? So I, lo I love it. I, I'm, I'm a, I'm, I do a lot of judging uh, uh, of the competitions of belly dancers, and I love them all. They're so beautiful, really. It, it seems like what you were doing in the special would get uh, a lot of attention, particularly from Elvis. Um, what was your experience? Well, I mean, you know, she's right there. You know. I know. When I, you know, I used to watch him in the movies, and I thought, oh, he's cute. You know, that's, that's all I thought. But I said, wow, he sings amazing. Okay, his voice is. Anyway, but when I was on the set uh, in the makeup room, I see this vision. <laughs> walking towards our area with this aura that I can't even explain with a smile, a little crooked smile that he had, you know? And I go, oh my God, and I just froze. And he, <laughs> he would walk in and introduce himself to everybody on the set. He would say, hi, I'm Elvis. And the guy says, I'm John, and the girl says, I'm Mary, and so on and so forth. And then he came up to me and he says, oh, Tanya, you must be little Egypt, Tanya. I go, yes, and he says, I'm Elvis, and he took, gave me his hand, right? So all I could hear is blah, 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 blah. <laughs>
And a lot of the music was wide open, but nothing on the paper hardly, you know. And uh, but he'd get out and dance and sing in the middle of the recording. <laughs> and it was inspiring to everybody. I, I kept my music from the one of the sheets of music. So you can see him with it and me on a picture. I've got the pictures. But I kept the music and I had him sign it for me. Knowing that someday it would be something that would be important to me. And uh, So I made copies of it. And on our sales table, there will be copies of it for you. And pictures of Ellis and I. And 68 come back t-shirts. And some CDs. The hurricane destroyed our church, and uh, all the money from whatever we do from selling that stuff will go to helping the church. Yeah. Woo! Because you you were in the studio, one of those privileged musicians that was in the studio with Elvis. You've been in the studio with a lot of, of singers. Yes. What was it about Elvis in the studio that was different, not only with how he approached the song, but how he interacted with the musicians? Well, that was one of the, he was so comfortable with musicians. I was doing a live album with Johnny Rivers, and, and we were rehearsing for it. It was Joe Osborne and Hal Blaine and uh, Larry Nitro, and we were rehearsing. Anyway, Elvis came in. It was the same time we were working on the 68 special, and Ellis came into that rehearsal and sat down and handed me my guitar, I picked up another one. He sat there and jammed with us, hung out, and he, he was uh, just really comfortable with music and with musicians. Then we all went across the street to get some barbecue. He said, well, bring me back some, I can't go. <laughs> there was a certain captivity with his with yeah. his greatness that, yeah. that he learned to work with and around. But when we did the 68 special, he was right there uh, performing with his heart in, and it inspired us. It really made a difference. Most, a lot of times we'd do recordings and the artist wouldn't even be there. He'd come in later and sing. Yeah. But that energy transfers to the, oh, yeah. to the musicians. Well, y'all are, when I'm up there singing, when I was talking to y'all and singing, I was giving my heart, but I could feel you pulling it out of me too. Yeah. What do you think about this? Elvis left us in 77 and here we are in 23, right across the street from the mansion, and it still seems to be people are being touched by the music. I don't he, he left something on the planet for us. He left us a piece of his heart, and it's still here. Yeah. Woo! I'm assuming that that a, that an artist, a, a guitar player like yourself, who worked with Elvis, and all the artists that you've worked with, when you hear the when you hear a song on the radio, you, maybe you hear a song that you're on. What what do you think about when you hear an Elvis song? Maybe one you're on or not on, but just when you hear that voice. Well, First thing I think of is, I'm the guy you've always heard, but never heard of. <laughs> but I, we, were, we, were riding, we were riding over here from the hotel on the shuttle, and uh, the lady that was driving the bus got up saying happy birthday to everybody. And then, then she said, now if you know this uh, song, sing along. And she played one of Elvis' songs, and everybody on that bus knew that song and <laughs> sang it. And it was fun. Yeah. Yeah, pretty wild. Yeah. We're just a big family. All these yeah. Things. yeah. Uh, Elvis brought friends together, people from different walks of life that were around him. He was friends with the jam. <laughs> what do you think it was about, uh, about your dad, Eddie, that bonded the, the two of them so closely? So quickly, really. I think it was because my dad was a little bit older and Elvis kind of looked up to him and trusted him. Uh, and he was a family man, mm -hmm. so he felt like he was stable and had had some amount of success in his life. 
and Elvis looked up to him, was my understanding yeah. at the time. Yeah. And there's another image here. Let's go to this one. The one this this became <laughs> became a very famous photo that sometimes your dad's in it and sometimes you kind of, <laughs> yeah, Daddy Daddy remarked that um, the a AP wire put this picture out but cut him out of it. <laughs> and it was his very first picture ever taken with Elvis and uh, so he was pretty disappointed that they published it without him in there. Where, do you know where this was taken? Where was the story where was this? This was in a little restaurant uh, on, in Oak Lawn, uh, Dallas. They had been shopping and Elvis had just bought the hat and uh, some shirts and Someone had called in and reported that Elvis was there, you know. <laughs> and so Elvis had gone in. He was having a bowl of chili and some saltine crackers. And a reporter just came in, you know, and said, i got to get your picture, you know. So he got his picture right then and there. And uh, then they made a little story about Elvis being, you know, shopping on Oak Lawn. Yeah. Now that was the Dallas years. Uh, by the time Elvis gets drafted, where is your where is your family then? Where am I go? In Waco. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Um, yeah, we were in Waco, and Elvis was stationed in Colleen, which is, and he has a little bandage on his finger, and he said he had gotten hurt in um, in camp that morning, you know, and he had to take the day off. So. <laughs> <laughs> he brought all his Elvis had a tendency to kind of just drop in on your family. So. Yes. Yeah. Yes, he would. <laughs> and, and while he was there, and, and this is one of the parts that I, I'm so excited to tell your family story. I mean, some people know about it, but I just love sharing with, with these fans that you guys have home movies yes. with Elvis. Yes. And we have a few of those. Oh, let's, let's, let's roll this first one here and see what we have. That's awesome. Well, Looks like I saw that hat. <laughs> this was the very first time <laughs> Elvis had visited us. And this was, I was just a little, you'll see me, I was just a little bitty thing. And what I remember most about this evening, because I was so young, was that there were all these people in the house. It was late at night. There was smoke in the air, you know, there were people just everywhere in the house and it was after one of Elvis's concerts in Waco Daddy had gone to the stage door and said you know I'm friends with Elvis and, and uh, they go yeah sure you are and he goes, I, I really am and he goes go get him and, and he'll you know tell you so Elvis came to the store, uh, side door stage door and said come on back so after the show he and his band came to our house yeah. And uh, and that brings us to our next. I'm not sure the timeline, but uh, okay. I think we're army now. Yeah. This was this was the day Elvis had hurt his little finger, and, you could see him as a man. and he goes, "Yeah, I'm, you know, I can't, I can't do the job today. I, I hurt myself." <laughs> so he was still in uniform. All his buddies were in uniform. Um, Anita was with him. And my mom had put out some little snacks for people, you know, cheese and crackers and pickles and olives and just whatever she had. And there's so pretty. Well, he can't do army work with a broken little finger. <laughs> And so, you know, you see, I put my shoulder up. It was like 
after I got off the camera I watched. <laughs> <laughs> you lost the audience right there. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I, I love your family story because he seems so comfortable being knowing that there's a camera there and knowing and, and kissing Anita and kissing you and just safe with a with a normal family. I mean, yes. there, there was a, a, a part of him, I think, that was very comfortable at a time that he must have been thinking, am I going to have a career when I come back? I mean, because there's am no... Am I going to have to lie? I'm sorry? What did you say? I said about having a career. He didn't know if he would still have a career yes. when he came back. So there's a pressure on him, even as he's relaxing with you guys. Now, the next one... One of the you know world's greatest singers. If there's a piano in the room, this is going to happen. Oh, yes. Um, this was our piano was located right in front of our front door of the house, and we had no air conditioning then. It was springtime, so the front door was open, the back door was open, so that some air would come through. Wow. And Elvis was sitting there playing the piano right inside of our house, just a few feet, you know, from our front porch. And people in the neighborhood and people in Waco that knew that Elvis visited our home would watch for the cars to come park <laughs> along the street. And when they saw them, they would start coming in from just everywhere, you know. <laughs> and um, so there were people that were sitting on the lawn listening to Elvis play. And then, uh, I, I'm just, some of you may know that he added on a room or enclosed a room of our house. Uh, it was an old portico chez, which is like a carport back in the old days. And he enclosed that to make a little private area for Elvis. And um, kids would come from all over Waco and climb up on that roof because it was it was a flat roof. And they'd like stop and try to get in the windows and see in that house and it was crazy. We had to unlist our phone number. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Pink and black were Elvis's favorite colors at the time. So yeah. those are the colors that Daddy used to decorate the little room I was just telling you about. And he always had Elvis's favorite cigars there. For him to smoke, I think they were little tipperillo type yeah. of thing. Yeah. And you can see the picture of Elvis in the background, and my father as a DJ in the middle. That looks like the hat that they bought in Dallas all those years before. Sentence, but I was able to figure it out. <laughs> Tell me your memories of, uh, of when did you guys find out? When did the TCB band find out? Hey, we're going to do this thing in Hawaii. When did you find that out? Well, actually, I believe we went over there in October and played uh, in that venue. Yeah. As I remember, I'm pretty sure we did. Uh, just to be familiar with the place yep. and familiarize yep. Elvis with it. Uh, but uh, we all had a good time doing the show. It was very enjoyable, and, 
Elvis was pretty well perfect. <laughs> it looked pretty good. Yeah. Yes. Yes. W was there anything different? Because you guys had already had, you know, tours in Vegas, and you were already a, 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 a unit working together. Was there anything different about this concert than there was about the other shows that you were doing up until that time? Did you approach it differently? Oh, I think we had some different songs in there. I, I believe I, um, as I remember, I arranged five mm -hmm. for the Aloha special, so we had some some different songs, <clears throat> and, um, and even more than that, that five. Yeah, but all in all, just kind of a, a, a normal show for Elvis. Did you feel like he was under any more pressure for this than... Uh, I would have been a little nervous if I'd known the entire world was going to be seeing. What about you guys? Well, uh, that's the question that people always ask. Uh, is it, I know this sounds silly, but to us, it just seemed like another TV gig. Really? Because it was like this here, you know? You can't really see the audience very well, and um, it was freezing cold in there, as I remember. Oh. And uh, we could see the camera people and the red lights uh, would come on. And otherwise, I mean, so it was just like doing TV, man. Yeah. <laughs> Elvis is so comfortable, at one point he throws a glass of water on you, so obviously he wouldn't be nervous. Yes. He was known to be a prankster a little bit. Yes, yes he was. As a musician for you, uh, I've been with you before listening to Elvis' music. Uh, You've worked with so many different artists. What was there about Elvis's voice and connection to the lyrics that might have been different than the way another artist would approach a song? Um, and that's a tough one because he, he just had some very special way of doing it. And I, I'm not sure I could unravel that for you because of it was something wonderful and even I couldn't figure it out. Yeah, just a man, you can't explain magic. Right. For you, as a musician, you uh, you still continue to uh, to go around the world playing Elvis's music. Sometimes with him on the big screen. You told me one time, man, he continues to look great. We just keep getting older. And older. <laughs> uh, what yeah. is it about that connection that you still have with him, even though he's on tape or on digital or whatever they do with it? Do you still have that that connection with him when you play? Well, uh, yes, I think so. Uh, it looks I'll, like it, yeah. Yeah. And I go play his music with people in Europe, you know, Yeah. Uh, quite often. Going to go in January, there's a gentleman over there named Dennis Chao. Uh, been working with for about 20-something years in a row. And we do uh, uh, quite a bit of Elvis stuff. Yeah. So I enjoy doing that. I enjoy working. <laughs> and I'm not ever going to stop. There you go. You guys in the TCB band have a special relationship with, uh, with the fans, you know. You were guys that, when I was buying the albums and the 8-tracks, your names weren't listed. You know, I never, except when Elvis, you know, introduced you, which must have been pretty cool to be on the record. Elvis, you know, like we just saw, introducing you. But we've gotten to know you guys over the years, all the TCB guys. You have a, a special relationship with the fans. Tell me about what you think about the Elvis fans who have now, obviously, then and now become TCB band fans and Glenn D. Harden fans. Well, it's a wonderful thing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it is nice. It really is nice. Thank you all for coming. Uh, and you know what? If I, I never go downtown in Nashville. Uh, it's just too busy down there and too crowded and too drunk down there. <laughs> but uh, every, every time I, I do, which is not very often, uh, foreign people, believe it or not, find, seem to find me. It amazes me. So, Glendy Hart. Glendy Hart. Yeah, they catch me in uh, there from all over the world, and it amazes me. 
It's a great yeah. thing. I enjoy uh, that. Yeah. You're famous, Glenn. That's uh, what I heard. Yeah. <laughs> Most fun moments I've had. My wife and I have had so much fun these last couple yeah. of days, going around, uh, seeing all the exhibits, and seeing the ripple effect. Uh, that Elvis has had the impact and influence on each one of our lives. It, it's amazing the light that he has brought into this world, and it's just, it's amazing. And we had uh, lunch with, with Donna Presley the other day, just and just to catch up on things that are just um, brought back so many memories as we talked yesterday. About, yeah, yeah. And our experience with Elvis to see Glenn back there, oh, and, and Alan Bly and his wife for you. You guys, the Osmonds. Um, have much, uh, much more as I started doing more, much more of, a, of an impact uh, with Elvis, a connection with Elvis than, than I had originally anticipated. I've, I've gone through and I've kind of edited down some of the imagery oh, that, that we had. Yeah, I had I to. Some clips of the, yeah, you uh, said. Uh, first thing I want to show is, is just the Osmonds' connection with Vegas and, and take a look at this billboard here. Okay. Oh yeah. So you guys, so the Osmonds, we you know we grew up with you. You guys were on TV and That's Williams right. and all this stuff. Right. What what got the Osmonds to, to Vegas? Well, we were performing with Nancy Sinatra in in, uh, in Vegas, and I don't know if some of you remember that. And, uh, and it was really fun uh, uh, with with uh, <laughs> Darlene Darlene Bla uh, with the Blossoms. Darlene Love. Yeah, she was there in, in Vegas, and so we went over with. Um, uh, to the international where Elvis was, uh, and so Nancy took the show over to the and became the Hilton. And now, the and, uh, <laughs> and that's where we met Mac Davis and, and the T.C. band and, and the Imperials, and so we were performing uh, with with uh, uh, Nancy, and, and we had come from a background with the Andy Williams show, a very very uh, tight. Organized, really. I mean, it was like perfect. Uh, you know, the dance moves, everything. And, uh, and I, you told me you have a clip of, of that uh, performing. But, and this is what Elvis saw in the lighting booth. He was watching us in the lighting booth yeah. perform at the International Hotel, and he saw us performing. And uh, this kind of thing. I don't know if you have a clip on. Do we have that? I'm not sure what they. This is this is how we used to be until Elvis had an impact. And I want to I want to show you the kind of impact Elvis had on us. Uh, I don't know if they have that clip up there, but but anyway, but he's, he was, but he's watching you. But he was watching us on the light, the yeah. lighting booth, and we got a message from Nancy uh, that Elvis would like to to meet us. And of course, we were in shock, and, and uh, uh, we thought, wow, this is uh, amazing. So we go up to his his penthouse and uh and all of a sudden uh, the doors open like that and there's this big smile he, he says brothers welcome <laughs> he says come on in brothers and so i i was you know i was 15 years old and the impact that it had on my life is uh I, we, we all changed that night and there were, there were these pinball games uh he, he loved pinball and televisions everywhere. I remember televisions. And uh, but he, I was playing this pinball game, and it had Las Vegas on it. And he comes up to me, and says, "Now, Jay, you, there, there's a secret to, to this game." He says, "You gotta, you gotta hit the ball over in that corner." And I thought, is, "This is really happening." Elvis is Presley's telling me how to play pinball. <laughs> it, it was like surreal to me, you know. And I think back, and, and then he had, uh, I, I know that uh, he, he had this. Uh, uh, Conversation with us, and how how he was um, he, he had this. First of all, he had this love for uh, his fans, and he told us, "You know, brothers, I can see what's going on, and I, I want to help you." He said, uh, "I know that you, you're 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 heading towards uh, success, and I, I'd like to I'd like you to to, uh, to visit with you. When, come come back afterwards to my show." So we went back. Uh, to uh, when he did a show, and, and he introduces us in the audience, and that's on Hillbilly, um, his Hillbilly uh, album, Cat album, and and we, we go backstage, and he says, "Okay, um, uh, I, I got to be honest with you, brothers. Um, <laughs> he said, I, I love your act, and I think you're really good, and you sing great, and you play great, but." Uh, you got a macho up your look, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he, and he, I 
I could just feel him struggling with that, you know. Yeah. And, and yeah. he says, uh, he says, come here, I want to show you something. So we we go backstage. I mean, back to his dressing room there. And he and and I think there's a clip uh, where where his his closet. He opens up his closet. Oh, yeah. And yeah. All these, the, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So jumpsuits. Yeah. And and those who have followed uh, our our family. Notice that we changed overnight. Well, let's take a look at that. This is before Elvis. Take a look at this oh, album cover. Oh, those are an album. There we go. That's see, that was the album cover that we yeah. That's before Elvis's influence on the boys, and then the next one is after Elvis has gotten a hold of. <laughs> As a, and by the way, these are all my albums oh, that, I had, that I had Jay sign the other Oh, that's night. what they said. That yeah. Uh, that, uh, when, when that happened, I thought, they're stealing Elvis's look. <laughs> they're stealing it. You aren't stealing he, it. You know what? He took the time to reach out to us and, and take the time and, and pull us in. And, and to really take the time. And he got with Bill Ballou, that Bill Ballou, uh, and, and he got with him and he said, and he said Bill, I, I'll never forget this, and I thought, this is Elvis Presley, the busiest man in the world, taking the, the care and the time to, to uh, uh, help us. And he says, I want, I want you to, to uh, design uh, similar to what I'm wearing. These guys need to look, he, he, said, he says, I want them to drive the girls crazy. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, brothers, you know I love you, but I, but I you got to lose the tap shoes, man. You gotta lose the tap. <laughs> so that night, we put the tap shoes away, and and, uh, and then so we uh, we did much of our look, obviously, yeah. but it also impacted our our music. Right. You'll notice that the music changed, and we got and Crazy Horses was also influenced by uh, Elvis, yeah. and, and Down by the Laser. Everything in our lives, you know, you think about uh, the magic that this person had, uh, you know, uh, he, not only did he bring a uh, unique talent to this world, but his humility that he had and his love for the Lord, love for the country, and love for the fans. Yes. I tell you. I, I, and, and, and by talking with him, and we got those impressions. But look at look at all of you. You have the same impressions from him, and, and we got those uh, those feelings from him. And he told us, he says, brothers, he said, uh, if I could do it again, I would I would go out and shake hands with every one of my fans. And and, and I and that really impacted us. Yeah. And that really uh, to that day we were always uh, because he said the fans are so important to your career and your life. And and he was right. And. And uh, he prepared us for what was to come in the 70s when we hit the UK. Right. And there's, I don't know if you have a clip at all. Well, uh, one we, thing I did want to talk about was that when he, so he first, <laughs> forget he said that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but then, and so he says, change, change them, give them colors, uh, you know, like, and then he asked me, what, what is important to you? And I said, well, what would you like to be? And I said, a warrior. Bill, write that down, a warrior. <laughs> And then he said to Wayne, what would you, what would you like, Wayne? And he says, uh, I love to fly. So he, he says, wings, put wings on Wayne. So what he did is he individualized each one of us. And so that we weren't, so we have these jumpsuits, and, and by colors. Too. By colors, yeah. And then <laughs> Bill Ballou's friend, who did uh, later on in the 80s, had uh, an <laughs> Yeah, but he, he, he gave us these colors. And, and uh, Bill Ballou's friend, who was the uh, Ninja Turtles designer, he says, I like what you did with the, the Bosmans. I'll, I'll give that to the, the turtles. So he, he gave Donatello purple and got me and, 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 and Michelangelo orange. It was the funniest thing. Who knew there was a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Osmond connection? <laughs> that was so you cool. know, I, uh, I, I just thought that there's some, there's some fun, funny things that I want. Maybe sometimes you don't know the connection, but I found this piece of video when I started searching. And I think it'll help me introduce and show the kind of fun relationship these two gentlemen had. So just, just take a look at this. This is from uh, backstage at Clam Bank, behind the scenes.
audience, when you have my job, you have to do a long flowery intro to tell the audience who someone is. But in this case, all I have to say is, ladies and gentlemen, Elvis fans, Lee Majors. <laughs> Set and see it again. So, take two, uh, same thing. I, 
I did a little bit more. I don't know if I'm out. And uh, they still, they said, cut. And they look, nothing happened. And Arthur said, all right, let's do it one more time. And uh, so action, and I go in. And this time, I, I, I really made it a lot of the road. I knocked over three, four glasses and picked up and <laughs> dropped the whole damn tray. <laughs> And he did turn around, both of them, and he looked at me, and then he realized who it was, and he just started laughing out loud like crazy. <laughs> the producer directors and the whole crew who was in on it, uh, naturally, uh, they, they had a lot of fun out of that. So, you know, <laughs> practically jump started after that, believe me. Clint was about during that time, because my mom and dad happened to be in town and visiting me, and, and uh, I said, do you want to meet Elvis? They said, are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah, come on. So <laughs> he came out. He came out out of the, out of the sound stage and, uh, and spent a little time with us and everything. He was very generous and a very kind man. You know, I was very surprised by him because, believe it or not, we both are rather shy and uh, well, well mannered. <laughs> we were raised, we were raised we were back here, where it's yes sir and yes ma'am. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he came from Tubalo to here, and I lived across the line only 400 miles from here at a place called Middlesbrough, Kentucky. Yeah. Uh, somebody, the one person that lives there is here. <laughs> anyway, I, you can tell us there. You know, there our parents taught us right to go and took us to church, and that's the start. Both uh, started developing our faith, and he was, you know, the gospel music and stuff. So anyway, um, let's go to July 31, 1969. And Elvis, that's when Elvis made his first appearance anywhere in eight years, and it was at the International Hotel in Las Vegas, and uh, had one of the largest showrooms in Vegas at the time. The Clark County Fire Department said you could only have about 1,100 people in here. That's the official count. But they stuffed 2,000 screaming fans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was called the Hilton Hotel. And, uh, and Elvis went on, he did two shows a night on the property for seven years. Wow. That's a lot of work. At eight, like at eight, at seven or eight o'clock show, and then a 10 o'clock show, and that's, that's the, uh, to do that for seven years, it wears on you. And I, and I think that was kind of the start, uh, you know, wearing down a little bit. But every year when my series would shut down, I would go in the summers, and, and, and I'd go drive over, and I would see either the, the late first show or the late show, because I had a little cabin over there on the lake. That, that was my hideout. But uh, he had a huge penthouse on, on the top floor. And uh, had all the trainings, you know, and, and the pool table and the great bar and, and a lot of great food and stuff. And always some guests invited up um, after the late shows. <clears throat> you know, and that's the bodyguards, as you know, and surrounded at all times. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the uh, first night I was up in, the, up in this room and after the last show, and, uh, they were everybody's playing pool or something. And as I say, I was always kind of shy. So I did I, I sat on the couch, kind of where I could just check out and observe the scene. The young lady came up, came up, and she uh, she sat down and uh, she looked at us. You know, like, who the hell are you? <laughs> obviously, had a couple of drinks. I mean, I, you know, I, I got only in my like my third or fourth year. I mean, nobody can do it then. You know, I, anyway, uh, I said, and I'm just a friend of Elvis, and she proceeded to give me a slap on the cheek. <laughs> and I, I, I didn't know why. <laughs> I knew that she had a few good drink, but uh, anyway, he must have been close enough to hear because he came over and he pulled her up. And he asked her, he said, did he say something to offend you? And she said, 
I didn't know. I just didn't like his attitude. <laughs> I think Elvis took exception to the fact that this woman had insulted one of his guests because he then slapped her right in the face <laughs> and said, There, now you know how it feels. <laughs> Sonny, I said, Sonny, get her ass out. Yes, <laughs> wow. That's I said to me, you know, he must like you a lot to do that, uh, you know, and I, I was kind of shocked to hear it, but I thought it was classy, but it was not. <laughs> <laughs> Some of it was classy. <laughs> anyway, a mutual respect was really born there, and, uh, and the guys became good friends, Red and Sonny West, Joe Esposito, Dick Sherry, Lamar Fine, to name a few. Elvis, okay, after another show, I mean, there's many, many, many shows. I'm trying to pick out just a few for you. Mm -hmm. uh, but another show, uh, and Elvis and uh, Red and Sonny came over to me, and I didn't know what they wanted, and they huddled around me, and, they, and Elvis pulls out this little chain, and he puts it over my head, and it's through a TCV. Oh. Uh, And uh, I said, welcome to the Memphis Mafia. And I am today. It's one of the favorite memories from uh, 50 years ago or more, maybe. But, uh, you know, all of his Memphis buddies, uh, he knew them well, he's trusted them well, and I think when he welcomed me into that group, uh, I, I really, you know, he was a big player, and I'll never forget that. And you all knew what the TCB stands for and everything. Once when I was ready to go down to the stage from the penthouse, uh, I think it was a uh, service elevator. And we'd, we'd bring them out and we'd open the thing and the wheelchair would be there. Red would stick it on one side and Sunny on the other. And of course, they both were carrying. You know, pencil. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he'd sit down, the elevator would go down, it opened up the kitchen, and then from there they would push him all the way through the kitchen, which, which is a long kitchen in Vegas Hotel, and through several other hallways and around and seemed like a quarter mile. But once the show was over, then he would come off stage, and they'd sit in the chair and they'd throw several towels on it because he was just sweating. I mean, it was. The trip back was a little faster to get back to the, to the uh, elevator. Uh, you have to understand, this is Vegas, and it's always 110 degrees in, in the summer there. Yeah. And the kitchen was a sauna with all of us, the full of us going. Mm -hmm. and so through many years, there were many pranks. Like one show, well, I got to the elevator, and the door was open, and I was sitting in the wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> Sonny was on one side, red on the other, but I had both their guns. <laughs> Son. <laughs> I was in this holy shit. He <laughs> left in front of him all, and, and, uh, and on another weekend when he came off the stage, I was in the wheelchair. <laughs> and Red and Sonny started racing away with him chasing us behind. <laughs> we turned the corner so fast, the chair tipped over against the concrete wall. I broke my watch all over the place. Elvis got his revenge in the basket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of my favorites though is when uh, Elvis would, uh, was on the other end of the stage and he had a time when he would, uh, and I was always standing up behind the dirt somewhere, but he was over there and he'd come out and he had all these silk scarves around his neck. I'm sure you've seen it. Oh, yeah. Not in person, <laughs> if, you know, in, uh, in films and stuff of his show. And he would lean over into the audience and the girls would swoon and take a scarf, take a scarf. So I got some scarves over there from Red. Put them around my neck and I do a little, I do a little slow motion walk out. And, and he kind of looks over and I'm leaning down to the girls and he says, that's enough, Lee. This is my show, you know. I, 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 I did a little slow motion 
fine. You walk on. <laughs> you know, I guess that's why he nicknamed me Double Trouble. <laughs> that was after one of his films. So anyway, that, that's true. This is an interesting one. <clears throat> it's a little more, more intimate, kind of, but there was a time after the first show, I, I knew I was going to leave to go back to my little camp down by the lake, and uh, so I spent a little time, because I know it's like half time of football, you got to go to the bathroom and get that, you know, towel up, look clean, so I, I was there, and uh, I said, oh, where is El? I kind of was referred to it as El, and, uh, uh, and they said he's in the dressing room and there was a cord going out of the door, but they said, hey, I want you to come in. So, oh, okay, so as I was going, I saw a couple of little glasses at the bottom of it. So I just kind of brought him in with me, because I knew he was on the phone. So I sat down, he's on the floor. Small closet kind of thing, some clothes in it, but he's on the floor, I guess the long cord. They didn't have cell phones back then. Oh. You know, it, it was a phone that went, the line went about a mile down. And of course, Elvis and all the boys were out there, and this is a private conversation, you know. And believe it or not, I know it was a girl, it was Linda Thompson. Oh. Uh, yeah, Linda was on the other end. And uh, that was uh, when they were first dating. And uh, I don't know, I guess they were getting along, but it seemed like a serious conversation. But she's coming up next, you can ask her. Yeah. <laughs> Ask her, I don't know if you know the store, I was on the, front, on the floor back. <laughs> so anyway, uh, you know, uh, also, you know, the guys are hanging outside, and the colonel's out there sweating bullets, looking at his watch. And, and, uh, you know, so finally, uh, uh, he came to the door and knocked, he was shelf time. Showtime, but while I was in there, I poured myself a little, shot a little, shot a little glass, just sipped it, and I said, like that. Said, yeah. So I, I put one down on the floor, and then got the station, and he picked it up and had a little sip. And I wasn't paying attention, but he drank that whole sip. <laughs> I didn't know that he really didn't drink, and honestly, he didn't drink. And so, that's why the colonel was facing out there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I said goodbye. I headed back to the lake house, but Red told me later that um, Elvis did a lot of that second show on a stool. <laughs> 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 he said that was the first time. He did most of the show on a stool, and the colonel was not too happy. <laughs> Heard it. He, he, he always wanted to just do movies, but he wanted to, to do dramas. Right. He wanted to be an actor and thought well enough as an actor instead of the shows he did because, you know, with, he just didn't like the little music and have him sing and everything. And let's face it, some of them were good and some of them were. Mm, yeah. 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 Fairly good. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the Colonel, you know, he had a stranglehold on him, believe me. And if you ever saw the movie, I'm sure you did. Mm -hmm. Elvis movie. Yeah. Yep. That was that was Colonel Parker right there. And Tom Hanks did a heck of a job. He <laughs> and, uh, I, I could have swore that that, that, that was Colonel Parker in that movie. Uh, but anyway, you know, he kept him doing these musicals to fill the coffers, you know, and his pocket. Yeah. 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 That's right. Uh, but, uh, you know, I personally never did see Elvis drink or take drugs or anything like that. And the guys that were closest to him really cared about his health. And Elvis, so I always said he would not see 50. He told me that. Uh, and, and everybody, at one time or another, you know, and because you know, his mother passed at 46, and mm -hmm. he passed at 42, mm -hmm. which is unbelievable. I mean, it's such a shame. Mm -hmm. just, to this day, it uh, bothers me. Well, anyway, Sonny, Sonny wrote a book called, uh, in 2007 called Elvis, Still Taking Care of Business. And he asked me to write uh, something for the back of the book, uh, which I did. 
And I, I think it's one of the one of the best of Alice's books. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. And uh, Rita Thompson, of course, who we will hear later, she wrote a wonderful book. And, and there you can she, you can get behind the scenes really <coughs> because you know she's with him, you know, his girlfriend for many many years there. Now, and you know, several years later, in 1976, Colonel Parker fired Red and Sonny. Mm -hmm. And he also broke up with Rebecca. And to me, that seemed to change him. It really did. That's when I saw that. Seemed to, I never saw him much after that anymore, you know. And it's funny, it's interesting, because Red and Sonny, they passed away within two months of each other in 2017. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, this is what I wrote on the back of Sonny's book. To this day, I strongly believe that if those people had stayed with him, he would still be with us today. It's hard to be the king. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to let you get out of here early for me. Uh, anyway, 28 years ago, the good Lord uh, sent me down an angel. And she's the reason that I'm still here today, for sure. So I keep the faith. My wife, uh, Faith Majors, is here somewhere. Yeah. Up there. <laughs>